Hey everybody, welcome back to Midnight Suns. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different, only because Windows did an update and my mic didn't record for this episode. So what I'm going to do is take the role of YouTube commenter <laughs> and I am going to talk about what I'm doing on screen as it's happening and kind of analyze the gameplay after the fact. Uh, going out to this, this is a defeat heavy enemies mission. When I was building this squad, I was admittedly a little bit concerned that we wouldn't have the necessary damage to deal with the heavy enemies. Uh, Strange is the squad leader. We're getting essences here. I brought a cool combination of combat items, the Rune of Aggression and uh, the Taunting one. We've got this Merciless card in here, and we basically brought that to set up for potential environment interactions. And the idea was that Magic could use her knockback and portals to really easily get uh, knockbacks into any of the generators or things that would have stun. So that was the idea there. Also, she's got some quick cards to deal with the early minions. Uh, Strange has some quick cards to deal with the early minions. And we kind of remove those from the hunter deck. Uh, the thing about the heavy enemies Hydro mission... In this area are causing trouble. Let's take them down. Not a problem. ...is that uh, you don't have any reinforcements, which is, is you know, really nice. Central focus. Uh, we're starting off with an extra, or with extra cards because of the combat bonus from the Hunter, and uh, he also generated one resist here. So one of the things that I've started looking at a lot more with the Hunter in the party is can we just ignore certain attacks if he generates that resist? And the answer is uh, yes in certain circumstances. Um, when we're evaluating this scenario, we've got five elites, uh, sorry, six elites, and only three minions, which makes sense, heavy enemies mission. And what I'm trying to figure out here is like, okay, so we've got the Winds of Watoom, uh, that's fine, but which enemies do I need to prioritize here? The problem is that so many are targeting magic, and specifically that marksman, the, uh, shield guard and then a couple of the other and then that other big elite right so we know the marksman is generally going to apply vulnerable first so he's not a huge priority but we do want to start whittling his damage down because he's going to become a priority if he's allowed to act later when we're looking at something like this wild strike it's <laughs> Here's the thing about how the, these Dark Hunter cards. First of all, I love building into the Dark Hunter because I do believe it's a little bit more challenging. It's There's always a trade-off, right? I will say this Wild Strike is very tough to use, but uh, because the Hunter can generate some resist with his current Caller, you can kind of work around that. Now... When I redraw here to get Agamotto's Gaze, uh, that's for me, that's like, when I get Agamotto's Gaze, especially early, I've got to figure out how to how to use it. Because with card plays being kind of the singular thing that never changes every mission, where you get three every turn, uh, being able to get four is just massive. And I feel like this card is so, so good. So I decided to use the Winds of Watoom to take out the uh, small minion. And I also wanted to do this without having to burn my moves early. So now I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to do with this, with a portal? Could I maybe just stun somebody? We have uh, the Crimson Bands of, I can't remember what the last thing is. S Kathak or Kathak or something like that, uh, where we can bind somebody with two heroism uh yeah that one there with dr strange's card but i'm just trying to figure out who our main target is going to be and I, i'm thinking look there's no way we can chew through all these health pools right now not with the cards that we currently have i'm also thinking if i can build up to use enough heroism to use that hero combo i could get rid of one elite uh, but it wouldn't even be one of the special elites like the marksman or the shield bearer or the other 
guy that does all the buffs. So it's kind of a tough call. Uh, ultimately, I believe I settle on trying to stun the shield bearer so that he doesn't get the dazes off on uh, magic. Because we kind of need her to implement our larger game plan of setting up a stun to deal major follow-up damage with the hunter card. But we also don't have that card in hand, so, you know, it's a plan that we're considering for the future. Other things that we're looking at here, we're considering that there is a side objective with that red card. So can we work that into our plan? I do kind of feel like side objectives can be a little bit of a trap. And in some mission types, you do have to at least get one of them. Like when you go on to those uh, artifact missions and there's like three of the chests that you need to open, you get your artifact. You don't need to get the other ones, but man, is it ever tempting. So, something that came up recently in uh, some of the comments, we we're talking about forceful knockback, specifically Whip from the uh, Dark Hunter card. And it has such a big downside of having to discard a random card, but you get to do a forceful knockback in quite literally any direction. So, I figure while I'm deciding what to do here, like we could talk about that forceful knockback a little bit. Here's the thing. I do believe in this mission, you're going to see why Forceful Knockback carries a lot of power. And for the ability to Forceful Knockback in any direction is really huge because in Midnight Suns, your positioning matters a lot. And if you're not able to get the right angle, that card that has Forceful Knockback in any direction is absolutely massive. So what we're doing here is we're setting up a portal over on this left side because we have angles to knock back enemies into the generator on the other side. If I wanted to knock somebody into the generator on that left side, either have to use a portal or I have to reposition and then use a knockback. So that's the reason we set it up this way. And now we don't have to worry about this guy for this turn. We're, we're not going to get magic dazed and we still have the other generator in play. So that's where that goes. Uh, the other thing to consider with forceful knockback is like, as you're aiming for where your knockback is going to land, oftentimes you'd be surprised at the amount of damage that can come out just by throwing them into smaller things like the bike racks or the lumber or whatever. Those things kind of stack up and you're like, oh, all of a sudden I'm dealing significantly more damage. It's kind of crazy. In this situation, uh, I'm looking at using Slash with a Forceful Knockback to just get rid of another minion. We take care of a little bit more damage on the Marksman. We reveal him, which is like, you know, fine, but not that big of a deal. You may be tempted to throw him into the barrier as well, or into the generator uh, to stun him. But it's kind of one of those things that's like, yeah, it's cool, but is it necessary? Because we know he's going to apply the Vulnerable, right? So if we know he's going to apply the Vulnerable, then stunning him isn't that big because there's no damage coming out. Vulnerable is scary, don't get me wrong. But remember, we have those combat items that can taunt away and draw their attention. So now we're going to go Agamotto's here. This is also going to let us clean up some of the extra minions because we know we're getting the winds of Watum. So that's a pretty easy decision to be made there. And we had talked about it. I remember saying this when I was recording it. I knew which cards were going to come in. And so that plan was thought of in advance. And now we have enough heroism for a hero combo. So we can just straight up delete somebody. And if I'm looking at this, I don't recall exactly what I end up doing here, but I've got three, sorry, two people targeting magic. I have one person targeting strange, one person targeting the hunter. The hunter has resist, so I could safely ignore that guy. 
Uh, if I remember correctly, I, I end up taking out the elite that's targeting magic. Because it's just an easy way to get rid of them. Uh, one of the other reasons we brought magic to this mission in the first place was because we have a challenge for her to use a hero combo. Unfortunately, the hero combo here was not... Uh, we'll was not enough. Or was not, sorry, paired with her. Okay, so I end up going on this guy. And I, okay, that's right. That's right. I put him into a situation where now I don't have to use a stun on him later. Magic is going to take the vulnerable from him because we we stunned the guy that would daze her. She's going to take damage from one elite. We're going to get the vulnerable applied, but there's fewer enemies to deal with. And the biggest damage on this field right now, the absolute biggest damage, is coming from the... Uh, the uh, marksman. So now what we're looking at is saying, okay, if we really want to protect her, Hunter does have one resist right now. And what I could do is taunt these two away so magic takes no damage. Or I could apply vulnerable on the Hunter and then that could be negated by... Uh, a resist later on, depending on what he generates. These are just some of the thoughts that are going through my head there. Um, we do follow this up with the other card where he gets the counter damage, because the Hunter, even just his base attacks right now, our Hunter's our strongest hero. So the Hunter is going to get so much extra damage output uh, from this turn that it really makes sense to do it. So here we go. We're using the combat items liberally, and I think that's the right call because we will take out uh, a bunch of these health pools, and the hunter will survive. Okay, so there's his resist gone. We deal 47 damage. We're basically putting these three guys into a much easier kill range. That was your one chance. 55 from that guy. Target locked in. And then here comes the vulnerable. As a reminder for you guys, if an enemy is going to debuff you, they always do it at the end of the round, so it doesn't feel cheap. Like, you can't tell the attack order of other enemies, but guys that apply the debuffs go at the end because... There would be situations where you get that vulnerable vulnerable applied and then everyone falls up and you're just dead, right? So it's kind of rough. So the Hydra Marksman is signaling that he's going to be dealing uh, a major attack here. So I'm looking at how we're going to possibly deal with him. It's a little bit more complex because he's invisible. So we can deal with him via knockbacks. We can kick him with environmental objects and uh, a couple of other things. In our hand, we have Last Sight, which on KO puts the Hunter into Concealment. And it's pretty good damage, 58 damage. We drew it with Crit as well. We have our four card plays from uh, Doctor Strange's Agamotto's Gaze. We have the Slash that we redrew with Agamotto's Gaze. We've got a Forceful Knockback. We don't have any portals to mess with yet. Um, and then we still have the Crimson Bands to Thwip somebody. Because <laughs> uh, it's basically the same card as Spider-Man. The upgrade to that's really nice, though, too. And I think that's going to be worth getting into. But anyways, we do have a way of, of tying down a potential problem here. And if we use the Slash with Forceful Knockback, we have enough damage to uh, KO the Marksman. So that's like a huge weight off our shoulders if we decide to go that route. The other card that we have here is Fury. Now, Fury is not a Dark Hunter card. It's a... It's like a Power Hunter card. It's neither light nor dark. What's cool about it is it's a lot of damage. It applies vulnerable. Uh, but it ends the Hunter's turn. If it was a... If it applied, like, too vulnerable, it would be a lot more valuable. Uh, but still, two heroism for 106 damage, that's no joke. 
So I chose to use the forceful knockback to get rid of the marksman. That is like just a big feeling of relief because that marksman can single-handedly knock someone out. No problem at all. Uh, you'll also notice, okay, so we have three elites targeting. One of them is frenzied, so two more card plays, and then the guy holding the red card would act. We have the guy on the right who's not targeting anybody. His job right now is to uh, apply frenzies, buffs, or healing to his teammates. And so he's not a huge priority for me, admittedly. Um, I do believe he gets a heal off at some point that causes some annoyance, but nothing too crazy. Uh, and I find especially if you're able to clear the field and you're not just distributing damage to everybody, his impact is less. So what I mean by that is uh, clear the field is maybe not the right word. Um, what I, what I mean is try to get people removed instead of leaving them at smaller amounts of health. That's going to limit his thing. So kind of all inning on every fight, my one specific enemy. Breaks. Okay, so we have two guys that are about half health. That guy does have a frenzy move soon. Uh, Fury here. I'm just looking. I don't remember what my, my, what my decision is. But uh, Fury would be able to KO one of these guys and it would make sense to do it on the on the uh red card guy last sight doesn't have quite enough damage to do it but we could go like soul blast into last sight for concealment on the hunter and then that other elite doesn't uh get to use his turn and then we could crimson bands of satorak on the shield bearer the big thing about him is, like, he's going to apply that daze, which could be one, two, or three amount in amount, and that's really rough. If it's one, fine, that's not a big deal. If it's two, that's pretty major, and if it's three, that's, well, use, you're useless for the whole turn. Um, so things are looking pretty good here right now. I don't recall what we ended up doing, but... I don't think... I I think what I end up doing here is... Because we have three card plays. Yeah. We, we could push that guy in. We could look at knocking this guy back into some stuff and removing some of that shield. But it's like... It doesn't seem that consequential. Let's see what I end up doing here. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, this was a this was nice. So we don't have any moves left, but the hunter is in position here to spend two heroism to get rid of that guy. And then we still have three card plays, so I could still soul blast, I could still last sight, and I can crimson bands of Satorak. We'll see if that's what I end up doing. I imagine that if you guys were watching this video without any commentary, <laughs> there's a lot of like, what the heck is he thinking, right? Oh, this is cool too. So this is our first introduction to interrogation because we just finished the research for this. So some enemies can be interrogated when KO'd. Uh, it must happen quickly, but can grant powerful rewards. So there's going to be a little counter that shows you the number of actions that you can take, not card plays actions the trade-off however is that it does cost a card play to do this so once again it's like do i want the resources or do i want the card plays that gives us access to the red card as well so we have two potential extra benefits on this mission already I think the play here is you Soul Blast, Forceful Knockback, you Last Sight, you Conceal, you KO the one that's targeting the, uh, the Hunter, or... I don't recall what I end up doing here. I may end up just 
attacking the- Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. That was part of the damage calculation, but uh, I forgot that he had that shock shield, and I remember commenting that because he's not carrying, like, an actual shield, it's hard to sometimes remember that, just at a visual glance. Anyway. Uh, th the option we could do here with Last Sight is instead of using it to conceal, uh, because we have resist, we're only getting hit by one guy right now, I could just use it to put in 66 damage on one of the other stronger elites. Or I could, or I could do that, or I could get rid of it and see what else we come up with, because if we could have got, like, a quick card or something there, then, like, that extends our options, I guess. I think ultimately that ended up maybe not being the the right call. I probably could have just put that damage into somebody else, but let's see how we play out the rest of this. I'm 90% sure we apply the bind here, yeah. Watch close. Nice. Good job, Christopher. Good job. Good work. Okay. So now I'm like, all right, I spent my heroism. I can't do anything else. I have the card plays, so now I get to do an interrogation. I love this animation, too. That's so cool. So we got 16 intel from that. Uh, may not seem like a lot, but that's enough to basically run another hero op. So pretty happy with that. Uh, in this situation, I'm thinking, okay, I have one redraw left, so do I want to redraw Fury? Do I want to redraw Acts of Ang Angoramus? And if I can't deal with the other guys in this next turn, I do want to apply a weak status to them. So I end up just burning the Hunter's Resist here. Whether that's the right call or not, tough to say, but I'm also looking. Our guys are pretty much full health. Everyone's pretty strong right now, and there's only going to be two enemies left, one of which is Only just buffing. So it's not a big deal. Now, we did get a Limbo Portal, and we do have the Generator, so I'm thinking, okay, we haven't drawn the Hunter card yet to get a bunch of extra damage out on, uh, on a stunned unit. It's got to be coming soon. So where is it? I, I remember talking about this. So it's I part of the plan. Like that once, centuries ago. And because magic can use her shove to knock people through portals, that's very powerful. I actually, like, I think I'm going to title this episode uh, Love for Magic or Magic Love or something like that because I know people have wanted to see more magic. And, like, me too. She's awesome. She's really, really cool. And this mission's a good example of, of why that is. So I'm looking at what the potential damage output is here, uh, depending on where I knock her back. It's actually the most if I knock her into the generator anyways and get the stun. Uh, but in the back of my mind, again, I'm like, what about that hunter card? I would love to pull off that combo. So... Pretty sure we end up playing the red card here. Um, soul blasting just for damage on this guy. I'm pretty sure we don't end up stunning. And then, uh, we weaken the one that's targeting magic. I think that's what we end up doing here. So right there, there's, see how it's a little sneaky? But that was very specific targeting that got us even more damage than what we were looking at earlier. So there's a, another great reason for the uh, forceful knockback. So Axe of Angoramus here makes a lot of sense. Fury, yes, it's 106 damage. Don't get me wrong, but you don't get any benefits of the vulnerable. I do find it hard to use that card. Um, specifically with this team comp. But in certain situations, like, if you have a ton of follow-up damage on a boss or something, then it's super worth. But it does amplify how important multi-turn vulnerable is. And then here, I believe I end up placing a Limbo Portal 
to set up for a stun. And then we are going to use the red card. Because the Limbo Portal is free. And that will persist between turns. And then I just have a shove that I can use at any point in time to, uh, to do it. We have a move left, so we may as well knock this guy into something. It's actually better. You get out way more damage if you can shove them into one of your teammates. We just don't have the angle here because in order to use the shove, you have to do it on your move. You can't go behind him and then knock him into your buddy. But that upgrade that we have now increases the damage output immensely. I remember debating whether or not I should play the Limbo Portal now, because it is free, so I can just play it next turn. But by playing it now, it's going to allow me to draw more cards into my hand on the next uh, card draw. So this actually is the right decision overall to play it. And then we have a Heroism. I know there's some newspapers there, but like, it's inconsequential to the amount of damage we have to do to the guy anyway, so I just hold it. And there's already been a few scenarios on this turn where you feel like, or sorry, on this mission, where you feel like um, we could have used a bit more Heroism. Okay, so now we got the Merciless card and we can see the combo coming together. So we also picked up Whip, we picked up Guarding Strike, which gives you block for every turn it's in your hand. Merciless would do a total of 265 damage here if the target is stunned. So you should probably look at their health bars for a second here to see if that's going to be enough. It won't KO that guy. But with this guy, uh, with knockback damage and stuff, maybe, we have the Gather, which we saw earlier, and then we have a Dark Heal where the hunter would take damage to fully heal somebody. I think that's going to be a redraw for us. At least if I was playing this again, I'd be redrawing that right now. Because in no world here am I doing that. Okay. So there's the stun. We can almost, almost take him out. No mercy for the that is insane amounts of damage. Lilith has sent you here to die. I hope you are prepared. There is a hunter card where you can summon up a light and a dark explosive. And I believe those explosives, at least one of them applies a, a stun. You'd have to knock the enemies into it. But that is something that we might want to look for to integrate into our deck for that specific card. And if we could reliably set up stuns to follow up with huge damage like that, it's super worth. Uh, we ditched that card because I can't hit both of them with it anyway. And now what I'm looking at is, how do I just impart as much damage to the shield bearer as possible? And I think we're going to end up using a portal and blasting somebody through it. But I believe we're going to go Fury first on the Shield Bearer to apply that Vulnerable finally. I'm just trying to work out the order of operations, thinking about, well, Guarding Strike is 79 damage. It only uses one Heroism. And I don't really need the benefits of Guarding Strike, where it's passively giving me block every turn, because we're near the end of the mission. Yeah, so this is this is the right call. This is actually really fun to watch this back and comment on it as I'm doing it live. As they say, it gets the it's job very done. it's very cool. Like, it'd be kind of interesting as well to hear my my thoughts about it. But obviously, that would be a very messy video to make where I'm like commenting on my own comments, you know.
Okay, so now we can do the forceful knockback. That guy has vulnerable, and we're going to take out the buffer. And now we're down to one enemy. Impressive. I think on the next turn, we do see a bug. And th this has been the second time we've seen this bug where... You'll have to do better than that. Where the enemy is targeting a certain person and then they end up targeting someone else. I think that happens here. So there, we got some block from Guarding Strike. This guy's gone into his AoE attack. This is not an explosion. This is a this is specific attack. Um, again, I've got the Dark Heal, which... Do I need to use that? Even if this guy got an attack off here... Everyone survives. So... Not really a factor. And I probably want to redraw the Dark Heal. Um, but what I'm looking for here is how much damage can I get out on Forceful Knockback. And I realize, oh yeah, if I knock him into myself, I get a ton of damage. <laughs> and I believe that's what we end up doing. I also, I, w I made this point in a, a YouTube comment reply recently. Discussing how I feel that Whip still has its place in a, in a Hunter deck. At this point of the turn... The chances of it discarding something that I really need are much lower because it has more cards to choose from. Um, so you either want to play it when your hand is full or you want to play it when your hand is empty. Or you know it's going to discard, you know, emptier. So it's going to discard whichever card is left kind of thing. Uh, but it would ideally be your last card play or your first. So that's brought Strange out of the AoE. I still think we should redraw Dark Heal here. I need to see how much damage we have on this guy. I, I uh, we may finish him here because we have our move, so we can do knockback into our uh, buddies. There's the redraw. There's Merciless again. Unfortunately, we're out of stuns on the map. There is a Hunter card that can upgrade into a 25% chance to stun. Lilith herself could not best me. So he's at 102, yeah. So I think we finish. We do finish him here. Um, and I'm deciding which cards to play. I think we play Merciless and we play Last Sight because it's two dark cards and we can get more dark alignment. Maybe it was the previous turn, or maybe it maybe I missed it. Um, but I'm pretty sure there was another situation where Hydra was showing as targeting a specific unit, but then attacked somebody else. And we had seen that in a mission in a warehouse before. Uh, the Obsidian Collar triggers here, which is kind of cool. Admittedly, that is something I was not thinking about and have not been thinking about as much as I should be. But we're only now getting to the point where we have enough dark cards help. in our deck where that can start triggering um, reliably. So. To escape. Now, don't Please leave the it. video Excellent just yet. Work. Because something happens here that's very fun. First of all, that mission went extremely well. And I was talking about how great Magic's abilities comboed. And then, boom! Boom! <laughs> Ultimate three, you guys. This is now this is the highest difficulty in the game. It's very stressful. I did say that we were gonna pick with this new difficulty anytime it came up, but like just look, okay? Number one, enemy health, 125%. Enemy offense, a hundred percent extra. No revives now. Not a single revive. Now we still technically would get the ability to revive Wolverine, because he's got his own revive. So that is a little different. Uh, but he hasn't even joined our squad yet. And yes, of course, you get more gloss and you get more hero XP. Um, but it's very scary. So I did end up I did end up taking it, and we are gonna we are gonna do it. But uh, I'm expecting that we're gonna hit some 
some bumps in the road here. We got a ton of essences, which we need. Uh, we got some intel, which is super nice. And I'm also going to stay on the mic here, and I'm going to walk you guys through what we end up doing at the Abbey. So we completed our research project uh, requirements for new threat. We've got a hangout that we can do, and we still need to perform a hero combo with magic. First of all, I do want to say our hunter room looking good. Okay, I haven't I haven't unlocked a whole bunch of clothing options yet. Um, but what I have done is made our room look amazing. Here I'm just evaluating who do I want to do my hangout with, who needs. Uh, we who need some friendship boosts. I've made this comment a few times before, but we should be considering like, man, do we want to, do we want to really focus in on a group of four or five superheroes? And I admittedly really struggle with that because from a, from a content perspective, I think it's fun to see a variety of superheroes on these missions. From a strategy perspective, absolutely makes sense to focus all of your friendship stuff on four or five people you know, because the the world is really you want to max them out. Plans. Where did you plan to go? All over the place. Calcutta, Vladivostok, Cape Town, Perth. Maybe swing through Transia on the way back. I see. You were going to these places to hunt vampires. No. Mm-hmm. Maybe. It's not the primary reason, but yes, it might happen. And why do you want to travel? Meet up with some other vampire hunters across the world? Share some new tactics? So it is about hunting vampires. So you think you're clever for guessing the professional vampire hunter wants to hunt more vampires? No. Mm-hmm. Maybe. You need to stop hanging around Parker. <laughs> okay, so go ahead. <laughs> you can just stop hanging around Parker. So I'm looking at a couple things here. Multi-dimensional multi ciphers, that's strange. Dark Beauty, Gothic Coloring Book, that's got to be Nico. Air Combat in World War II, got to be Captain America. And then I'm like, man, do we just give him a little girl's dream music box? I'm like, he probably is not going to like this. But he's also, like, Blade's a little bit more of a sensitive dude here. And guess what? He loved it. Again. He literally loved the rare gift. Okay? So, I mean, that's hilarious. Uh, we got plus two crit damage for the hunter. Love that. There's a goblet randomly sitting here. Uh, Blade has now hit the next friendship level to unlock his passive, which is really nice. I believe it's called Cold-Blooded. And it's going to give him a, I think, 10% chance on any attack to apply bleed. So it's one of those things that when it triggers, it's going to be really nice. You probably can't rely on it. But a lot of Blade's attacks are like multi-strikes and stuff, right? So you should reasonably expect it to trigger once in a while. I'm looking for chests that we need to open. Chests that have been closed. Uh, if you look at the... If you look at the map, you will see that chests have... They do appear open if you look closely. Got a regal bed and a fine armoire. And a really nice combat bonus for increasing hand size, I think, for three turns, which is insane. Uh, so I believe I'm going to pop around and open a bunch of uh, chests, any, any of the common chests here. I don't want to open too many because I don't want to waste the potential of getting more combat bonuses. But at the same time, I still need a common blueprint for the shop meeting, I believe. So I'm hoping that in one of these chests I can get that. Uh, that said, I could also um, change, I believe, my rare blueprint that I have to be two common blueprints. So that's a way of doing it. But at the end of the day, like it's not the most crucial thing to, to, to get both of the options from the shop class, I don't think. So uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to break my head over it. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do some more uh, pimp my room situations here. I have 560 gloss. I do want to save some 
because I want to buy a hero gift every day. I've made this point before, but gloss, while used for 99% cosmetics, also is used for hero gifts, which have a very big impact on gameplay. So, buy a gift every day. Literally, there's no reason not to. And then whenever you do hangouts, whenever you do the havens, you should have a good option. And the the big legendary gifts, they're pretty obvious with who they should um, be given to. Look at that bed, though. Look at my armoire. It's amazing. It's really nice. My bed I can change here. Different colors. Obviously, we're going to go black, dark hunter. Why wouldn't we? I do feel like it's weird on this screen, on the customization options screens. You have to hit R to unlock it. The rest of them, you just hold the mouse button. I don't know why that is the case. It could just be one of those things that they had at one point and forgot to change it for specific things. Now I'm talking about how I'd like to start unlocking more clothes for my guys and have them change their, their outfits every day. It's funny, recently on uh, Reddit and Twitter, I've seen a lot of people saying this is like a really cool option to change their clothing and stuff. Good girl, Charlie. And it, like it is. It's just funny how that how that's kind of come up recently in my Midnight Suns echo chambers. You know, I wanted to make sure we got Charlie pet, and now we're going to sleepy time. Okay, so we got some friendship level ups here. We're gonna start our day with Blade. Thought it might be nice to get away from the others and not talk for a change. So we are going to fight again? Not exactly. You've proven you can handle yourself with a sword hunter, but a warrior's greatest weapon is their mind. Yoga requires discipline, balance, and control. Three things I'm hoping you've got in spades. How about we grab a couple of mats and find out? <laughs> I still, I just love the approach they've taken with Blade. He's just like, if you've ever watched the movies not take with you Wesley for Snipes, practice the asanas. Sound mind, sound body. Why not work both? You at would once? never expect it to go this way. Besides, I look good doing this. Okay, Blade. Let us do this. Was hoping you'd say that. Now sit down, relax, empty your mind. Or as Magic likes to say, pretend you're Robbie. So we're looking at the next team friendship level to unlock more supply in the gift shop. It is a 10% chance to apply one bleed when dealing damage, and he got a Steel Wind rare color palette here. Okay, he's also got a hero hey, request. Can I ask a favor? Every hero has a pariah in their rogues gallery, but Spider Man has dozens. Check out this list. Which one has the goofiest gimmick? There's Stilt Man, this can't be real. This increases the Hunter power, which increases the size of area abilities, which the Hunter doesn't really have. And then there's, so this Kangaroo, he just hops, and the Hunter's strength increases knockback distance. Thanks, so that's Hunter. clearly the pick here. Uh, the point that I made at this point in the video was that these little stat boosts, while not super significant, will add up over the course of a campaign. But you're also not going to be thinking, oh, you know, I have 5% extra knockback range on my hunter, so like, how am I going to how am I going to utilize that in my planning? Like, you're just going to see that in the UI and be like, okay, yeah, I have this range, so. Uh, it's always beneficial. No downside to buffing those. So we do have some hero ops to do. We have some intel caches to analyze, I believe. We got the Ghost Rider Judgment card from his hero op. So he consumes 25% of his health. Currently, I guess that's showing us 40. So he has 100. If I had time, I'd take care of these myself. 20. But I have been accused of hogging the ball before. And then he'll damage an enemy 
uh, two damage for each health. So, for one heroism, pretty solid. But it also damages everything nearby. The upgrade to that makes it so that there's no friendly fire. Uh, it's a decent upgrade. It's very similar to his Heroic Midnight Suns card. But uh, instead of dealing two times damage, it, the, the Midnight Suns Heroic card deals four times damage. I'm here if you need me. So now we're basically going to decide, um, before we commit somebody to a hero ops, we want to check our mission table first. We did hit a friendship level up with Nico by, I believe, <laughs> giving her a compliment. Guess what? That you wanted to show me another movie. Uh, not just another movie, my favorite movie. It's something I make all my friends watch with me. <laughs> the tone that we deliver this with hits so harder this than movie is like a rite of passage you put people through than what I expected it basically, to basically some of my friends might even say it's a form of torture the man on the screen certainly looks tortured why is she wearing that hideous red dress oh you're tearing me apart hunter pay attention it is a bit difficult this movie is rather <laughs> terrible <sighs> it's called Camp Hunter. It's supposed to be a little bad, but in a good way. Besides, it's a cult classic. Kind of like you. I will try and take that as a compliment. You're really starting to fit in with the rest of us, you know? We might just make a Midnight Sun out of you yet. I like that that's a little bit, like, self-aware, you know? Of their writing. Like, I, I like the writing in Midnight Suns a lot. Her passive that she got here, if she's at full health, there's a 33% chance to draw a card whenever a Nico card is played. I believe the upgrade to that removes the full health requirement. Um, but yeah, I feel like the writing is fun. It's light. It's sometimes cheesy, sometimes corny. The Hunter writing specifically is like he doesn't use any contractions because he speaks like he's from 300 years ago. And sometimes that can kind of feel a little bit robotic in its delivery, but... Um... I like I, I still am I'm still enjoying Fascinating. it. I could not have Okay, so the nanotech up, combat weave intriguing. item, you can see what it does on the left. It's gonna be uh, two free heroism. So it's alright. Like every combat item is good. The point that I make here is like, is that worth the trade off? of using a combat item, of, of bringing that along in a combat item slot that you could use for something else, right? So we have new threat available where you can earn XP in a training combat arena, or you have the borderline suit, which gets us access to the vengeance passive. Ultimately, I end up going with the suit because, uh, A, we can change our look a bit, and then we can experiment with some new hunter passives. I have a feeling that the passive that we currently are using is going to be... Hey, hunter. The, one of the strongest. Don't blink or you'll miss it. Because generating heroism is great and generating resist is great. They're uh -huh. both good and they uh, happen every time. Bad, right? So finally here we're getting some more Dark Hunter if cards. This thing behind me turns into a giant gateway to ancient Egypt. We got a nice magic card that um, has knockback but does damage as well. We already have two Winds of Watum and the Blessing of Ashanti we have one in his deck that's upgraded. I don't see a reason to take another one. It's a it's a good card situationally, I guess. It just I don't know. It's that same thing as the combat items, right? It's the opportunity cost of all the other benefits his cards have. Looking at Winds of Watum, I made a, a point about how the enhancement works. So you'll notice Winds of Watum doesn't cost heroism. So on these type of cards, like attack cards that don't cost heroism. You just need to have that amount of heroism in your pool for the enhancement to kick in. It's a pretty neat system. I end up taking the magic card because we need to buff her deck and we can start upgrading some of her cards. And then the all out is a bit scary because yeah, you got to discard all all hunter cards, but 106 damage for one card play, I'm one sure heroism, kind of hard to beat. And we are getting closer, finally, to really building out a, a true Dark Hunter deck. 
So the game is is giving us some th not just throwing all the light hunter cards at us finally. So we're going to go look at upgrades. I don't know if we have anything we can even do. Yeah, we don't. Um, but sparring-wise, we have some options. Training level, we're almost at the next thing, which buffs the slider damage. So now I'm deciding, okay, I got I to gotta know what my mission is. And if we look at these options, we have Tony Stark's main mission next. We have Capture Hydra Agent, but it's hard. But remember how we just unlocked Ultimate 3? So I'm like, man, going into a hard mission on Ultimate 3 seems like a bad idea. We just got a bunch of essences. I do need some ability crafting and some prerequisites for upgrading certain hero abilities. And I think because we're on Ultimate 3 now, going for a quote-unquote easy mission might be a way to kind of ease us into that difficulty a bit. Because admittedly, I am nervous about it. I'm, I'm concerned. I feel like we are going to struggle a bit. Having no revives is like... I know we don't typically revive our heroes anyways if they go down, but the option's always there. Having no revives is just like, oh my god, scary. Very scary. It also has a nice challenge where you play three skill abilities, which like for sure we'll be able to do, so we'll get a bunch of keys from that. Uh, it's a blade mission as well, and now I'm looking at who do we bring along for that. I need to do one more mission with Ghost Rider, and then we get to unlock the Armory, which gets us into challenge missions to earn legendary suits and abilities, so that's really great. And then Alien Alloys is the other one that's available to research at this research level, uh, but I need to upgrade Captain Marvel cards, I believe. So either way, the point that I make here is like, I don't need to get an artifact right now, because I have so many projects that are going to become available at this level. I have two that are available at level 6. I do need to look at my requirements for the level 5 ones. Because we will be there sooner yeah, rather than right. later. These and the here... Priorities. We have two missions expiring in two days. One gives an upgraded common. One gives a rare. I end up going with the rare ability. Um, I believe... I don't remember who I send here. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Okay. We send Captain Marvel because of the, the requirements to upgrade some of her abilities for soon. research. So that's the deciding factor there. So then for sparring, there's a couple of options that I'm considering here. Um, we get to increase the size of area abilities. And we talked about this recently. And... Uh, as it stands, I, I did talk to the devs. As it stands, those abilities are only impacting strictly AoE circle abilities. So something like uh, Magic Spanish or Scarlet Witch abilities that you will get into when she gets recruited. Um, it currently does not apply to something like Photon Beam or Ghost Rider's Hell Ride. Although, and I can't really confirm anything... Um, that may be something that they address in a patch at some point. So that would be that would be nice if they did, because it makes a lot of sense and it opens up your options for who can get that um, who can get that benefit. So I end up giving it to magic, and uh, that's basically when I'm deciding, okay, I'm gonna also take magic on this next mission. Um, we see here that the chest in the library has been reset. And there's also a couple of other rare chests out there. But I have a combat bonus on the Hunter already. So I don't recall if I end up opening this or not. I probably do. Yeah, see, hand size increased by one for three turns is like massive. I almost feel I almost feel like it's could be not wasted, but it's not going to be as strong on this easier mission. Uh, but I mean, whatever. Then we'll go open a bunch before the next mission. And after this next easy mission with Magic and Blade, uh, we'll go to Tony Stark's mission. And I believe it's on Avenger Tower. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was fun to do. Uh, I don't intend to do these. But thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.